Hey guys, how's it going? So, we got a newsletter that came out yesterday. Uh, I wasn't able to get to it, so I'm getting to it now. Uh, this is to kind of split the videos so that it isn't as long when we get to the actual update tonight. And also I got a couple of seconds to go ahead and record now so we can go ahead and get one update video out. And if anything, buffs nerfs will happen tomorrow or whenever I can get to it Friday. Um, but yeah. You were watching the Discord. I stream yesterday. Kind of had a uh, family emergency that came up. So uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So I'll be starting late tonight as well. But we um, got the Jita. Yeah, I had no clue what Moon Gundam was. Build the little phone thing and people in chat. Uh, the stuff in there looks really cool. I have to say, uh, this thing looks awesome. So I had no clue what this was anyway, period. Uh, I know like three suits from Moon just because of the, again, the phone app, whatever it's called now. I, I, I kept saying Gunpla Warfare and then I finally found out last podcast that it was renamed. But yeah, we've got Moon Gundam stuff now. So I wonder if we're going to hit Advance of Zeta sometime soon too because of the leak that we're out but let's go and take a look at how this suit plays it is a 450 general and i won't start my rant at all or replay my disappointment for not seeing a support in five weeks now um i'm trying to remember if we got a support well i guess technically at this cost we got one during the event as far as a uh, special suit but uh we still haven't seen a 700 support and I know I kind of talked over the footage, but really it just has the hip rockets. It does have grenades in its arm, which I'm going to assume it looks like about four. So it looks like it's kind of like Zeta. And um, Beam Saber uh, looks pretty pretty simple. Um, nothing too crazy there. I'm guessing the downswing is that, so it could be very lungy. Which, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Very lungy downswing. Uh, so maybe kind of like a stamen kind of thing. Uh, 450 that would be kind of cool to see there um, it might be farther than the beta which is going to be its main competitor the hip missiles are probably going to be either for follow-up damage on a knockdown if this thing's melee isn't crazy and what I'm guessing is you're probably going to just melee anyway uh, if this thing doesn't have two dodge rolls it's going to be pretty weak versus the beta and again the beta is still kind of the king I think Unless I'm missing a suit right now, I don't think we've gotten anything at 450 that really competes on a good level with the beta itself. So, yeah, hopefully this is a contender. Beam rifle looks pretty instant. I don't know how much ammo or damage it does, but, um, you know, it might be more of a shooty suit. So you might get a bit more damage that way and be able to follow up with the missiles on somebody's legs. But other than that, um, Actually, if we could look back in the video one quick second. I didn't notice if it... No, they just shot it off. They didn't actually shoot it at somebody, I don't think. Yeah, they just shot with those missiles instead. So yeah, I'm curious to know, again, how much the dagger rate is for the grenades and what those missiles can do. So overall, looks like it's a pretty solid... Oh, and it does have head Vulcans as well, so we'll have to see how good or bad those are. Uh, but we'll definitely try to figure that out uh, later tonight and I'll get that video up again as soon as possible with the buffs and nerfs. But moving on though into the penalties and follow-ups for the badge challenge. So, badge challenge thing, um, essentially if you have the uh, a penalty during it, you will receive an abandoned status and you won't get a uh, challenge for it. Uh, right now, apparently, you could just leave and it wouldn't count toward any of your badge stuff. So if you have a loss, then you know, you're taking the, uh, actually, I think you could do it in quick. So, I mean, you're probably gonna end up with a penalty, but um, you don't lose any rating, I don't think, if you leave a quick match. So I guess people were just doing that who didn't care about that sort of thing which really sucks, but anyway. Um, yeah, now screw those people. There we go. Good job. Good job, BB Studios. Thank you. Uh, and then after the change as well, 
for the um, abandoning a game. If somebody on your team abandons a game, then you most likely would lose. Now, if you manage to win, cool. And I'm curious to know if it still is null and void if you win. But most of the time, what they're saying here is that you will lose if somebody leaves. So the challenge will just be considered invalid and it won't record it as a challenge being taken up. Again though, I'm hoping that if, um, like, and this is on the ally team, uh, leaves the game, the result of the battle will not be recorded. Uh, again, hopefully it, if you win though, it will still be recorded, but um, they didn't say anything there, so I'm just assuming it's across the board. Probably has something to do with the coding and might be a little bit more work than what they could do right now. Hopefully they do change this if it's just when people leave that it just doesn't record period. That if you win, then maybe something happens there. Honestly though, the other problem is is you know, if somebody leaves on the enemy team and you're already, you know, winning or the game just started and somebody DC'd, then that means the game's pretty easy and you're just racking up points just trying to get the best score you can for the challenge. And personally you know, after a certain point, somebody left, then fair enough. But up until, like, for earlier on in the game, if somebody leaves, I wouldn't want my challenge to be counted, but that's kind of my take on the challenge system for your favorite suit kind of thing as well. I am really sad that the uh, badge that gets put next to your character isn't something that is hard to really earn. It is so easy to get and I'm really disappointed in that. I really wanted something pretty much where it showed that you can play almost perfect for 15 games with the suit. And sadly, it is not. Um, yeah, so uh, that, like this is already dead on arrival for me. You know, I'm just kind of doing it for the meme now just to have it with the Dom Barrage. But yeah, I'm not really grinding it or anything like that. Yeah, so it's, I don't know, kind of odd, but uh, yeah, I, for the people who like this sort of thing, cool. But I was really hoping it would be something that was a bit more intense. We'll definitely talk about this and bring this up on the podcast tomorrow. Um, but I'm really curious to know their opinions and yours as well. Anybody watching, let me know in the comments what you think about the challenge system as a whole for the uh, badges. And you know what you think about the changes here. Do you agree with what I said? Do you think there should be another way they could do it? Or any other ways so they could change what they're going to do tomorrow? Um, but yeah, moving on to the revisions to how the damage to bases is recorded. No, my base cheese. So I was really sad to see this because one of my strats in space and I had been working on a video and didn't finish it though because I was just kind of turning it into a montage of scores and killing bases is well, getting high damage scores and killing bases. So a lot of times I'll do the Zeong in space and I'll kill a base, people distracted, win, and then normally get a rival win because my damage score would be 200, well, almost 200,000. I have hit about 220-ish some games. And, you know, especially with something like the mass production, uh, not mass production, QBLA, the QBLA Mark II, I can go ahead and destroy a base, and if I have the force to bully at the same time, I can hit, uh, I think I've hit 250,000, or it was 255,000, I think, for the mass production cubulator. No, no, sorry, cubulate mark two. I don't know why I keep saying that. But yeah, the cubulate mark two. And yeah, now any damage to a base does not count in your damage score. So that's kind of sad, but uh, I'm hoping what they do is they throw in a did you kill a base thing because at this point that just kind of discourages people from killing a base and a lot of times right now distracting somebody and killing the base at the same time is really pretty cost efficient there you're able to get essentially five kills while hiding somebody around the base and if you can do it effectively I like that strat um, that's my whole base cheese thing, is I kite at least one person around, take them out of the fight, so it's a 4v4, and I'm essentially getting 5 kills while he's trying to face me around. And if the suit's right, cool, I can kite them almost indefinitely. 
If not, then I have to fight, and then it's just a 1v1, which is what I was expecting in the first place, probably. So, yeah, not bad. Um, sadly, I might not be doing this in the future, because another reason why I do it is it almost guarantees my rival win if I can then get out and get a couple of kills, and my suit doesn't really die much, and I can just kill it pretty quickly. So, yeah. So this one's kind of a feels bad because, I don't know, it just feels like it got rid of a strat that I've had a lot of success with. Um, I don't know how the JP community feels about it. Um, I know I talk about the base cheese and sometimes it's a meme, uh, but there's a lot of times when I'm really trying to, you know, make sure it works, I get people's attention and take them to the base. And I think it's a pretty viable threat. You get one or two guys and kite them well enough, you die twice, but pretty much get five kills if you kill the base. So, you know, it's point efficient as far as by the end of the game, if you make it work. But anyway, there's that. Might be dead now. Is I mean, it still works, right? You can still win the game, but if you're trying to climb in rating, which is what I did for space, there went the rival win part, which is kind of the main thing you want to do when you're trying to climb in rating. But anyway, enough on that strat. Moving on to the new map. This is exciting. This is big. Um, yeah. Uh, go ahead and talk about this. Uh, We'll definitely talk about it in the next video, what I think about it, and, you know, of course, what I think about the suit, if we get it, try that. So I'll try to, just, my, my thoughts right now, and hopefully won't have to re-talk about it too much. Uh, but apparently you can blow up the ships. I don't know, I'm guessing they're going to have a health bar like the, the missile does, and then they explode. So there is four ships, and then some kind of island thing here. I guess you could walk out of the water on that pretty or boost out on it. It's going to be really awkward probably for supports at lower cost to walk up on it. I'm going to guess. Might have to jump. Uh, I'm curious to know how deep this is and can you jump out of the water onto the ship? You know, is it like you're on a ship and then you fall in the water and you're essentially... The water suits are just going to be sharks in the water kind of thing. Uh, it is cool that we have points under the water to cap and one up on the uh, spot here. Again, if it's hard enough for suits to get up here, it'd be a cool spot for supports to sit. Uh, though it is going to leave you quite a bit exposed, but really cool idea. I've been waiting for a water map more like this. I am really curious though, to know if we're gonna see a lot of water suits on this or not very many. And are we gonna have a team that sits on top here and one in the water. This one for sure is going to be pretty much my fear of port base only to the max. And really port base these days on port base moist is you just stay out of the water most of the time and you jump in water just to either hide or jump in and then jump out or just to get some extra boost back so then you can get somewhere else quickly or maybe get a beam to recharge a little bit faster. So kind of curious to see how a map where you're pretty much Forced to be all the way in the water, or I guess you could just stay over here and be an all support comp. So I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, again, how deep is the water and how high are these walls? How easy is it? You know, how flat is this area? Can you see that wall easy? Can you just sit back here with a bunch of support, shell, whatever you need to? Also, if there is bases here, is there a way to shoot from point base to base? That could be a cool little, like, cannon barrage rat or something. I don't know. I'm, I'm just kind of throwing out some random ideas. I think there, I mean, it, it would be very cheesy, but I think it'd be kind of fun to, uh, to see what can happen. Um, I feel like there's a lot of mini games that could be played with this essentially. Um, but yeah, just some random community game ideas. Uh, and looking at this, this looks pretty deep. That's, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see in any scenario like this where you're support and you fall in, that's a big Bill's bet. So definitely going to be interesting to see how fast these ships blow up and to see how fast this becomes an all water battle. And can you actually get effectively out of the water onto a boat efficiently? Well, that kind of efficiency is going to be key to what, you know, a lot of people either like or dislike about this map. So really curious to see, you know, 
what the actual end, like, yes, it's good, or I completely hate it type of thing happens, but yeah, we got a recently almost all water map. This is what we were talking about when they started talking water. So yeah, I'm curious to see where this goes. Pretty excited, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, they kind of talk about strat here. Um, I will say this has a large water depth, so uh, when you perform a jump with the maximum pulling time underwater, uh, the jump time will be extended. Makes it easier for worship. Okay, okay, cool. So don't be afraid to take advantage of it. So there, so I guess that's just a thing now. I guess that's just the underwater thing. I wonder if that works in um, port base technically somehow. I'm guessing when you leave the water, then it just uses your duration faster. That's kind of interesting. I am curious to see how that feels, jumping out of the water like that. Anyway, uh, then the rocky area, they use it as shield. Cool. Something, just use your brain is what, they, what they're saying there, pretty much. Um, there's a belt thing here. What? Hang on. Okay, uh, yeah, that, that, that just, that's weird. I don't know. Random link is random. Anyway, uh, lastly, uh, I know I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but um, did you all enjoy the month-long campaign, uh, three three-year anniversary? Um, actually, anybody listening, uh, let me know in the comments what you thought about the third anniversary. Was it front-loaded? Did because uh, my my opinion here's my opinion. It was all front-loaded. You got the new, you got the Sazabi. Uh, the Yagdoga was cool. There was no support, so I'm really mad and disappointed. Again, yeah, I'll try not to jump on that too much, but that's probably going to be my take the next few weeks till we get a 650-700 support. So, yeah, it looks like it's the... Uh, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, with the release of the Molesuits from Shkar's counterattacks, such as the new and the Sazabi, along with various events, we feel the celebration was a fast success, both inside and outside of the game. All of us are filled with Mint gratitude for all the players, blah blah blah, stuff and things. So yeah, um, they're talking about they're gonna keep adding new mobile suits and features and making improvements. Cool. Um, I don't know. I uh, again, we'll see. I'm curious to see the buff and nerf stuff, but felt very front loaded and was very kind of lacking, especially in week four. Week four pretty much was nothing for me other than the new suit was cool. I will say I did get the um, uh, Riga Z custom and I am loving it so far. It is a shooty suit and it is right at home in my hands. I was able to carry with it. It is definitely one of my new general 650 suits that I will definitely play a lot of. So I am happy to say that, but it was not a support and we did not get a 6700 support or even just a flat 700 native would be nice. See, I'm just saying. But yep, yeah, hopefully that comes soon. But yeah, guys, let me know in the comments what you think about any and all of this. Um, what was your take on the anniversary or anything that I've talked about in here or that has been shown? Again, we'll cover the buffs and nerves and hopefully get some kind of take on the suit and the map itself tonight. And I'll be able to talk about those in the update video. Usual stuff, though, in the description down below. Twitch, Twitter, Discord, stuff like that, guys. But that'll be it for this one. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Peace!